Well, let's just start with him, with William, this gorgeous, gorgeous little boy. We're seeing the photos there. He's just a wonderful child. Um, what was he? What was he like? Was he was just so happy. You know, at the end of every single day, our cheeks hurt because he, we'd just be smiling so, so yeah. much. I've only got one photo of him crying. Um, he, he was just so content. Um, he wanted to... He, he, he was just so calm. You would sit and play with him and he would want you to show him how to do it and then he would follow. And oh, bless him. He was just... He was just perfect. He was everything that we'd ever dreamed of and more. Mm. And so he had this persistent cough. And so this was lasted for about seven weeks. And you took him to the GP. And what, what did they say? Because seven weeks is a long time. And um, we took him to the GP quite a lot over those seven yeah. weeks. Um, and every single time they just told us it was a viral infection, despite more symptoms becoming, you, you know, like vomiting and things like that. It was three days, two days before he died, um, he, he started getting a really high fever and we took him to the emergency doctor and um, we were sent home. Um, we, we didn't find out until after William had died that the examination was, it fell below standard. Um, in the 36 hours before he died, we saw two doctors and spoke to the 111 service and they all deemed William's um, situation as, as non-urgent and within a few hours of speaking to the last doctor who told us to leave him in bed, that was the best place for him to not bring him in, um, I, I went in to check on him and he'd, he'd passed away. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, so my God, sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, the NHS imagine. England imagine. report, as you mentioned, they, they published that last year, found that there were four missed opportunities to save William's life. Doctors, the 111 non-emergency helpline failed to diagnose pneumonia. Uh, and the, uh, the common but lethal infection of sepsis. He died within 12 hours of your last call. The report found that there were 16 mistakes contributing to his death, which included the ticks, tick box system used by call handlers and failed to include sepsis red flags. Um, and because part of this problem is that nobody really knew what to look for knew what the signs were, despite the fact that it kills 37,000 people each year in England, more than breast, bowel and prostate cancer combined. I know. When we had William's post-mortem results and it said that he had died of sepsis, I looked at Paul and said, that must be really rare. I, I don't know what that is. Oh, gosh, and it's not. And, and then we obviously took to Google and found that actually it was UK's second biggest killer. We were dumbfounded. We were speechless. And so what your campaign has done and the big breakthrough that you've had is that his case would now have been seen as urgent. Yeah. And that's the big difference, because it is urgent. I mean, yeah. this is a matter of hours, as, as we saw with your child. Yeah, and I think once there is even a hint or a potential case of sepsis to be treated within the golden hour, you know, as a medical emergency is absolutely vital. And it doesn't just... It's not just for children, it's for adults. Yeah. You know, we lose more adults than we do children. And there are, you know, children out there without parents because of sepsis when it could be treated. What do you look for? What, what are the signs? Um, William's symptoms specifically was um, he had no urine output. He, was, um, he, he had a very high temperature, but also a very low temperature. People don't realise that a low temperature is dangerous. Um, cold and clammy extremities, vomiting, floppiness. There is a, can, can be a rash. But, I mean, I would, I'm, I'm not a clinician, so I'd advise you to go on to NHS Choices or Sepsis Trust website to, to familiarise yourself with the symptoms. And, and what actually is it? Because, it, I mean, he had it with the pneumonia that was in his chest, but it, yeah. it can... I mean, we've spoken to people that have had it from being to the dentist, having a cut in their gum. I mean, it can be anywhere on it's, the body, can't it? Yeah, it's um, the, the body's reaction, overreaction to an infection where it attacks its own organs. So William obviously had this pneumonia and he ended up with lots of fluid in his chest cavity and that is where the it got into his bloodstream and attacked his organs. You, um, you've been remarkable as a family because you haven't got angry, you've got active, uh, uh, really very, very active. What have you achieved so far? Well, li like you say, William didn't know anger or regret or blame and for us to live in a life that is enveloped by those things would just not honour his memory in the way that, you know, he was a happy little boy. So actually we want to do something for people to remember him by that. And so one of the things that we have done, for example, is we've had leaflets put into the bounty packs for all new parents um, about it. There's been a campaign um, for, for young children, so GP surgeries carry the leaflets. Um, doctors now, if there are um, red flag symptoms of sepsis even if the the patient doesn't have sepsis there to give a leaflet about it um, but we're you know we there's a lot more that needs to be done and we're going to be working with the government to to make sure that this snowballs 
And you, I mean, you've, you've become project manager at the Sepsis Trust because they originally helped you and now your, your knowledge of this is invaluable, your experience is invaluable. Um, do you, do you, you, you must be incredibly proud of his legacy and what, what, what he's achieved. I'm blessed that he picked me to be his mum. You know, I'm, I'm honoured to call him my son and I'm incredibly proud of what's been achieved in his name. You know, it's not me that's done that, it's him. And, you know, for any, the impact that he's had in his short life is more than I could ever hope to achieve in a lifetime. Yeah. You know, and I don't think there are many parents that can say that about their children. Tell me about the teddy. Um, well, when William died, we wanted to bring him home and we wanted to cuddle him still. We had aching arms and so we put some of his ashes into a teddy bear so we could bring him with us and, you know, so he's here with me today because it's, it's about him. Well, well done, you. Incredible. Just, just extraordinary what you'll do. You and William will save so, yeah, will. so many lives and hopefully prevent a mum and a, and a dad from going through what you guys have gone through. That's all we hope for. If one life is saved, then it's well one done. life more.